Because we're not interested in putting a dummy in your mouth and feeding babies. Come on, lift up your hands and say, by about now, I should be teaching. I should be teaching. I should be leading. But what are we doing? We're still babies. We're still falling back. And so every Sunday, we've got to preach baby messages, baby talk, baby things, because we're not growing. God is wanting people to grow up. See, this is a strong word, but you've got to mature. You've got to grow. Men, wake up. 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 Women, wake up. Husbands, wake up. Wives, wake up. Teenagers, wake up. Don't you know? Read the Bible. We're at war. We had an all-night of prayer. Only five of us turned up because the rest of you had stuff to do. So the prayer meeting still the least attended meeting. Whenever pastor has a men's meeting, nobody can come. Oh, I ain't seeing too many people smiling. Oh, let's have a story because it's getting a little intense in here. I will let you out. Like I said, it's a 10-minute message and we've still got three minutes to go. How exciting. Thank God I've still got a sense of humor. Nobody killed me today because I've still got a job to do. I will live and declare the works of God. I will get out of here alive. I know I will. I'm leaving right at the end of the message. Listen to me. There's two lines in heaven. Of men that were called to heaven. And there's one line, and as far as the eye can see, you can see men lined up. They made it to heaven, but lined up. And there's another line where there's just one man standing in that line. And Peter, it is a story. This isn't, this isn't in the, the fifth gospel of imaginations. It's a story now. Just a little likeness to loosen the, the sense of sobriety and ser- seriousness that we're having now. Got you ever say two lines in heaven? And uh, Peter comes down to the pearly gates. He opens the gates and he says, I've been doing this job for years. He says, let's see what we got today then, boys. Right, he says, here we go. Apostles are there, the angels are there. Here we go. We've got two lines of men here. He says, there's the, there's the line of the men who made it only just by the skin of their teeth. And they look and there's a long line of men lined up all the way back, for, as far as the eye can see. Well, at least they made it. And then there's another line, there's just one man standing there. This was the line of men that actually rose into their full maximized potential. All the men lift up your hands and say, I rose into my full maximized potential as a man. The rest of you are not putting your hands up because you know which line you're in. But anyway, just lift up your hand anyway. Lift up your hand anyway. Lift up your hand and say, Father, help me to grow to my full maximized potential as a man in Christ. But in that line, Helena, there was only one man standing there. And Peter said... There's never anybody in this line, but thank God this line, at least they made it. All the men say, well, at least they made it. But what happened? They made it, but they never, put your hand on your head, all you men, put your hand on your head, say, they never maximized their headship potential of being, say after me, so all the men say, prophet, priest, and king. Before God, before your wife, before your children, say prophet, priest, and king. Why prophet? Because it's up to you to teach and guide them. Why priest? Because you've got to get in the gap and intercede for them. Amen. Why king? Because you're supposed to be a, make enough money to feed them. Amen. Everybody say prophet, priest, king. king. Now all the men lift up another hand and say guide, God. govern, God. God. You see, when Dr. Cole wrote his book, Maximize Manhood, that went out to 500 people, then to 10 million people, he had one word for men. Repent. Yes. Yes. Jesus came out of the wilderness. What was the word he had to men? Don't think that's a, that's a tough word, Joel. It's a, it's a beautiful word, son. All the men and all the young men lift up their hands and say it's a great word. Thank God I can repent because I get it wrong so many blooming times, Lord. But I'm going to repent. God, give me a tender heart that says I'm wrong, God. You're right. I repent. And if you're a man that can't repent, I'll tell you what you are. You're a stubborn, proud, stupid little boy. Amen. Lift up your hands and say amen. amen. If you can't repent, you're a proud, stubborn Little boy who's still an adolescent who has never grown up, even though you might be 74. Who likes my preaching? Who doesn't? Amen. How many ladies love it? Amen. Ladies, do you want to marry a man or a boy? Give me a man that I might wrestle with, says all the women. I need a man that I can wrestle with. That we can we can wrestle together like in the things of God. I need, a, I need a wrestle. 
How many married people like a good old wrestle? It's coming. Hey Amen. All the, all the single women say, I'm, I'm still with the Lord. He wrestles with me. Amen. In the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we go back to the lines in heaven. So Peter opens the door. He says, look at this. There's a big long line there. These are all the men that they made it, but only just by the skin of their teeth. And then he sees this little fellow standing there. And he's, got, he's, you know, he's a little bit geeky. He's sort of standing there. He's kind of shaking a little bit. He's going, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. There's a man standing in that line who made it to heaven. And that line was the line of men who were not dominated by their wives. And that was the line of the men that actually, that actually were heads. You got it? Who got it? And Peter goes over to him and he says, this is amazing. How did you do it? You're the only guy standing here that made it to heaven and you were really ahead of your marriage, your manhood, your money, your message, your mission, your mountain. You really made it. He said, I've been doing this job for years. I've never found anybody over here. How did you get over here? He said, my wife told me to stand here. <laughs> Everybody lift up your hands and say, Heavenly Father, it's not my wife that told me to stand there. It's Jesus Christ who's saying, as a man, I've got to take headship in the home. I've got to take headship in this marriage. I've got to take headship of money. I've got to take headship of management. I've got to take headship in my life and in my family, or I'm allowing, by default, my wife to do it. And if my wife's doing it, I'm not helping her. All I'm doing is setting her up for destruction. Now, all the sisters, lift up your hands as well. All the women in here. Don't think that you're getting off the hook either. Lift up your hands and pray for me now. Say, Father, every manipulative, controlling spirit that's in me that would be a Jezebel that would destroy the headship of my husband, moaning, complaining, bitching, complaining, and manipulating and using tears to do it with jealousy, insecurity. Don't, don't pretend all you women. Lift up your hands right now and pray and say, Heavenly Father, deliver me of that spirit of Jezebel that I might be a wife who fears God, a wife who stands with my husband, a wife who prays with my husband, doesn't bully him, doesn't bash him, but prays for him night and day, day and night, night and day, day and night, that he might become all he's called to be in Jesus' mighty name. And now all of you give a round of applause and go, Ouch! Come and play some strings, Tino. Or somebody come and play some strings. So how do we, how do we achieve the restoration? Let me say the restoration of the cutting edge. How do we do that? How are we going to do that? Well, here's how we're going to do it. We've got to put that word. Let me say put the word first. You see, covenant conviction puts the word first. If, you, if you've not... If you've not I can get rid of the stick now. If you've not been putting the word first in your life, I want you to pray this right away. Say, Father, I've not really been putting the word first. Help me to put the word first by the Spirit so that I can change in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, pray it with me. Verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is wholly acceptable to God. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, the perfect, and the acceptable will of God. Father, I need... Now, pray this. All of you say, Father, I need to make adjustments in my life that puts the word first. I need to schedule my days to put the word first. I need to schedule my sleeping, my eating, my organizational skills so that I put the word first. I need to put value on church and get up early and be at church early. Look at me for a moment and say, Heavenly Father, everything about me says something about me. You know, every little thing about you says something about you. If you're a, if you're a very casual person, you will end up a casualty. You know what? If you've not got absolutely clear, listen to me now, I'm going to preach real strong to you now. If you've got not got absolute clear, clear, clear conviction about morality, then you'll sleep with somebody and get pregnant. Amen. And you say, Pastor, I don't know how this happened. I do. If you're not absolutely clear, clear, clear biblically what the Bible teaches, that which is righteous for a man and a woman, you'll commit adultery. 
So well, how, how did that happen? It's because you have not put the word first. And as a result of it, you're not sharp. You're being swayed. You're being brainwashed. You say, I'm not brainwashed. Yes, you are. You're either being, come on, lift up this Bible, say blood washed with uncompromising fundamentalist teaching of truth or you're being politically correct and you're being influenced by carnality and humanism and actually a spirit of syncretism which is a concophony of all kinds of religious beliefs rolled into one. You'd be shocked how much new age is in Christianity. You'd be shocked how much psychology is in Christianity. You'd be shocked how much sugar-coated candy preaching is in Christianity today. Your best life. No, God wants your sacrificed life. I'm not against Joel Osteen. I'm not against him. I believe you need to pray for him. Any man that has 40, 50,000 people, they need to pray for him. But preach the word of God, Joel Osteen. Preach the word of God. Stop telling people little nice little soft little soapy little stories that will make them feel all happy and frothy and bubbly and they go home happy, frothy, bubbly. Read the Bible. Weep between the porch and the altar. Read the Bible. Hebrews chapter 6. Repentance. Come on. Faith towards God. Doctrine of baptisms. Resurrection of the dead. Resur- laying on our hands eternal judgment. When's the last time you wept between the porch and the altar? You got on your face and your hands and your knees and you cried out to God for up-to-date repentance, which is what Kevin Dyson taught me. Amen. Not taught in the church anymore, Nicholas. Because you know what? I'm in grace. I'm, I'm Hebrews 4.12. I'm, I'm right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in the rest of God. So that, you know, I've attained... That's Gnosticism, a form of Greek mysticism mixed with intellectualism. I'm preaching real good now. Did Paul say I've attained? No, he didn't. Read read Philippians chapter 3. What did he say? Not that I've already attained. Come on now, lift your hands, all of you resting people in grace. He says, not that I've already attained. I haven't attained. uh, Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, the original terrorist. God loves terrorists. So he loves some of these Islamic terrorists that are blowing people up because he loves Paul. Not that I've already attained. Have you attained? Well, you see, I got this great teaching. I got this this, this great CD, this book from America. Grace. Don't need to pray. Grace. Don't need to go to church. Grace. Don't need to tithe. Grace. Don't need to make an offering. Grace. Don't need to submit to a man of God in my life. Grace. Don't need no accountability. Grace. Don't need to submit to my husband's headship. Grace. Don't need to listen to the pastor of the church. Grace. He's just a man like you and me. Grace. He annoys me anyway. Grace. Don't like his messages. Grace. Don't do evangelism. Grace. Never share the gospel. Grace. Yellow cowardly. Grace. Never share with nobody. Grace. Never make the prayer meeting. Grace. Never fast on Thursday. Grace. Never do the 21-day fast. Grace. Always late to church. Grace. But I always got time. Grace. To watch sports. Do what I want to do. Grace. Do my job. Grace. I got to work, Pastor. You don't. You got an easy job. You do nothing but just read and the Bible all day. Grace. Now, somebody lift up your hand and say, disgrace. Disgrace. Let me go to a church that's just surviving. Grace. Me smoke and me puff and me got tattoos all over me. Grace. Me got the tattoos from head to face. Grace. Me interpret those tattoos. What them tattoos mean? Dirty ink. Grace. Me got piercings through me eyes, through me face. Grace. Me got me girlfriend pregnant. Grace. Me got conviction. Grace. Me go into prison. Grace. Me got a tattoo. God can't judge me. Grace. Yeah, me got grace in this church, man. Grace and grace and grace. Me and the rest, man. Me just grace. Me a team. Grace. Me don't go in no church. Grace. Me float around. Grace. Me jump around. Grace. Me don't have a disciplined life of disciple. Grace. Me left, they never listen to the pastor. Grace. He put a lot in my life. Grace. But I, did, but I don't really take it seriously. Because me don't take him seriously. Grace. Me don't respect who he is in God. Grace. Me don't respect who she is in God. Grace. 
Me swear, me use bad language, grace. Me get drunk all the time, grace. Me smoke a spliff, grace, but me got grace in me life, grace. Me looking at girls in the church, grace. Me got lust in me life, grace. Me do a bit of porn, grace. Play that tune in there, grace. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know some of you are thinking, oh, what's wrong with him? I don't know. But Ada, there's a lot more right with me than wrong with me. Amen, that's right. <clears throat> Muslims going to hell. Five times a day they'll get down and turn to Mecca. Men never miss the mosque. Going to hell, following Allah, which is, means in the name of Allah, Mystery Babylon 666, which means Antichrist. We're all the Christians. Grace. You can be a little bit that way if you like a man. You can have a man because it's all grace. You still save, man. We can ordain you. You can be a bishop of grace to the homosexual community by grace. Now, if you're a homosexual, you need to repent. You're a Muslim, you need to repent. You're a Buddhist, you need to repent. You're a Presbyterian, you need to repent. You're an Anglican, you need to repent. Catholic, you need to repent. You're a Pentecostal. So I'm Pentecostal. Repent. Are you saved? God will only recognize the blood, people. He'll only recognize, he'll only recognize the blood. Where did you drop it? Where did you drop it? Pick it up again. Now, some of you are getting on in years. Grace. Make something out of your lives. Make something out of your salvation. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Father, help me to make something out of my salvation with what I've got left in my life because otherwise I'm going to follow American preaching. I'm going to buy be books by Rob Bell called Hope, Be Hope Beyond Hell, whoever he is, stupid fool. And I'm going to listen to false teachers. I'm going to get caught up in false religions. I'm going to get caught up in new age, mysticism, witchcraft, Jezebels, lies, and demons and devils. And I might go to hell. And I don't wish to do that in Jesus' mighty name. Feed on the word. Matthew 4, 4, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word comes out of the mouth of God. Isaiah 43, 19. Are you, are you open to change? God says, I'll do a new thing. He says, I'll do a new, he'll spring forth in your midst. You shall, shall you not know it? I'll make a road in the wilderness. I mean, if you're open to be shaken and stretched, God is bringing a great shift in the earth. God is bringing a great shaking in the earth, Hebrews 12. There's a shadow, Psalm 91, that'll come upon those who are really willing to change. But there's also a shadow of destruction upon those who won't. <clears throat> Confess your faults one to another. Repentance. If men would practice repentance, they'd be awake. But the longer you hide things under the bed, in the cupboard, on the internet, on the television screen, the longer you keep hiding as a man, and don't pretend in this church that men don't hide, because whenever it's time to set up, there ain't, there ain't but a handful that come. And when it's time to go, there's a, there ain't but a handful that stay. And when there's time for anything to be done with the men in this church, I'm talking to the men, you ain't never here. Because you always got something else to do, hiding in the stuff. All the men lift up your hands and say, Lord, I must adjust my life to be connected to what Pastor Steve has taught me, the men's ministry. Or I'm not a man, I'm a mouse. You've got to make those changes. Or you'll go down, or your sons will go down, or something will go down. <coughs> Live that life. Everybody say after me, the secret to your future is hidden in the daily routine. You've got to get out of bed. You've got to pray. You've got to read the word. Every day, you read it consecutively. A psalm, a proverb, Old Testament, New Testament. You've got to do that. Or all you'll be next year, 12 months from today, will be more attenders in church by invitation, listening to messages but not being discipled. You've got to have a heart for the kingdom of God. You've got to come out on Tuesdays. You've got to make those sacrifices when it's an outreach to make sure that you're not away. Now, all those lift up their hands and say, Heavenly Father, what must I adjust in my life to put the kingdom first? 
What must I adjust? Put up your hands and pray it with me as a prayer of repentance. Say, if that involves family time, friends, good things, I must make adjustments. I must make adjustments to my life or I will fail. You must. Listen, when I was a young man with potential to have taken my career further in, in football, I put it to one side. So that I could serve the kingdom of God. When I was a young man with potential to have become a very successful chef and make a lot of money, I put it to one side. Why? So that I would give my life to the word of God, to evangelism. People still find me on the streets preaching. What is that, folks? Am I trying to get a a brownie point of view? No, I'm saying it's a focused life. Everybody say, focused life. Because I've made my decisions. Whatever is detracting me away from God's mountain, away from God's presence, I must cut it off at her. Turn to the person beside you, say, what is stopping you from growing? You must cut it off. And if you do, you'll grow and you'll flourish in the house of God. Change. Everybody say, change ain't change. Turn it's change. Confess your faults. Start to, start to repent. Get a pure life. Get a daily plan. Jesus, it says of Jesus, uh, Mark 1, 35, he went out into a solitary place. There he prayed. He did it every day. Matthew 6, 6, when you pray, you go to the secret place. You get into that place with God. Build yourself up. Who's baptized in the Holy Ghost? I've taught you in this church before. An hour a day praying in the Spirit. Who does that? None of you. Spend an hour singing in tongues. Put a worship CD on. Make your mind diligent to the things of God. Stick on a worship and for an hour sing in tongues. Then you want to come on a platform and worship. Well, if you'll spend an hour worshiping God in tongues, you watch what will happen. And we've got a good flow on this platform. But you know what? Some of you come on Sunday, you're not even prepared. So that's why we have to, we have to warm the saints up. Take about an hour and a half for everyone to get on the page before we're flowing in unity. Amen. Everybody lift up your hands say, Father, next Sunday, get out of church early. Get up early. Pray. Be fired up because I'm a lazy little fella. Male or female. A heart for the kingdom means a heart for souls, lost souls. You know, I preached in Germany, big church in Germany, and I'm preaching about a heart for nations. And I guess my preaching must be pretty strong, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not diluting it. About halfway through the preaching, it's a German, a couple of, a woman. Stonked out of the church. I thought, ooh, hallelujah. Woo! Mushy, mushy, mushy. <laughs> what was that, people? I'll tell you what that was. That was the conviction of the Holy Spirit convicting them of their sinfulness because they're not on fire for God. And when somebody says, get a heart for God and a heart for the nations, it offends their invitational Christianity sitting in church that it should just be just a wonderful little time altogether. Everybody should hug and sing Ringa Ringa Roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue. We all fall, fall down. This is the way we brush our teeth. Around and round we go and, and, and everything else and everybody's happy and everybody goes home. Round and round the mulberry bush, here we go. Here's the last one, the healthy, disciplined mind and spirit. Everybody stand up with me now. Stand up. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Serve the communion emblems, please. Pray this prayer with me. Take this away, please. Take this away, please, Danny. Take this away. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Lift up your hands and say, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for daily discipline and focus to the things of God. Thank you, Father, for the daily discipline to the diet of feeding on the Word, which will bring the determination, which will release destiny into my life.